Lewis here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. If you guys are wondering where Larry's at, he is actually on another shoot and I am covering for him. But today we have a really cool car for you guys. Um, it's a GTR. It's a really, really nice GTR. Uh, we have the owner here, Michael. Hello, sir. How are How's you? How's it going, man? Um, so introduce yourself. Give us a little info about yourself. So uh, I'm Michael Barr. Um, a while ago, it was a, a dream car of mine to get into a GTR. I've always been into the tuner cars. And when I really started doing my research, uh, I guess just homologation cars really hit it off for me. Um, getting into cars that have been um, raced and um, tuned for uh, competition, I really feel like that's where the consumer gets the best car um, and it's the best platform to start with. So um, how long ago did you purchase this car actually? So I, I bought it uh, about two years ago. I was the first owner in the States. I bought it in Japan where it was being shipped over on a boat. Um, it was originally gray, like all Skylines are practically. So it's, it's important to make things different. And I guess what really made me get into tuning cars and, and tuner cars for in general is just making them your own. So I wanted to get started right away by uh, painting it R34 Bayside Blue Metallic. Um, so we tried to stay close to the original color code, but we added a little bit of flake to it and uh, just to personalize, personalize it just a little bit, right? Exactly. And, and that's kind of where the snowball effect happened. It was not planned to be uh, this in depth and this far into it, but now it's a full on street car, maybe someday SEMA car, who knows? But yeah, that's usually how it starts though, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll get a radiator, you know, I'll get an intercooler. It, yeah, yeah. Cold, train turbo. <laughs> cold air intake went to a big single standalone and fuel system real real quick. Yeah, because this uh, this looks very far from stock. I mean, that's insane. So, I mean, you already have the hood propped up. I was um, I was shooting some photos of it earlier. Um, so let's just let's just dive right into this right now. So um, give me a quick rundown of your whole setup right now. Yeah. So um, the first thing to do with these cars is is decide if you want to stay twin or if you want to go to a big single turbo. Uh, after doing a lot of research, even though I wanted to do top mount twins, it it's, turns out that the big single is usually the most efficient way to go uh, to get the most amount of power, early spool, all that good stuff. Turbo technology's come a long way since the you know 90s, early 2000s, to the point where we have efficient enough turbos to get the job done. Um, I went with a uh, Precision, uh, that's a 6262. It's a dual ball bearing twin scroll setup. Um, and it kind of we kind of just went with it as is, and it's been really good. Um, starting off with like low to mid 300s all the way till now where we're right around 550 to the wheels um to the wheels yes wow so we'll, we'll get more into that in a second but we the first things i, w I did was we, we took out the motor we painted shaved and tucked the bay i wanted it to look really clean and proper I'm, I'm i'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to details and i really wanted to make it uh look like you just kind of dropped a motor in there yeah um, it's it's beautiful honestly like this yeah, thank you. So, so going with stuff like that, we, we went with uh, uh, taking a lot of stuff off the front. Uh, we went with E-fans and a shroud, which was uh, a, a move I was wondering about a lot. People stay with the clutch fan, but it's, it's turned out all right so far. Um, we went with an electric power steering system. So we have a custom electric power steering system in the trunk. Um, again, that's just to clean things up, get a lot of that parasitic draw off the front of the motor. And uh, from there, we went with... Uh, a lot of stuff for titanium. Um, my fabricator, Mike Randalls, who works at Eminem Motorsports, he's been awesome with all my fabrication. He helped me with ch cleaning, shaving, tucking the bay, all that stuff. Um, I told him I wanted to do titanium and I wanted it to look pretty, yeah. and uh, he delivered. That's definitely very pretty. Um, so we did all titanium for almost every single pipe in the car, except for the down pipe, which is an HKS pipe. Um, all the intercooler piping's all titanium. Um, and for, uh, for boost control, we're running a Turbo Smart dual external 38 millimeter wastegates. And uh, we have little dump tubes going straight down to the ground from there. We also have the Turbo Smart race port blow off valve. And uh, from there, we just kind of kept going. Um, the intake manifold is aftermarket with uh, a lot done to the fuel system as well. Um, as you can see, that's an HKS dual port fuel rail. Um, for injectors, I'm run currently running IDX 1050s. Those have been awesome. Um, it was actually previously running Dodge Hellcat uh, injectors. It's kind of funky. <laughs> the, yeah, it was yeah. funny. We actually, the shop was building a Hellcat and we had some laying around. So just to get some tuning done, we tried those out 
and we actually quickly found that they, they get maxed down on E85 pretty easy. Um, we were only able to get up to like 450 wheel on those, so we knew more fuel was important. So we stepped it up from a 250 fuel pump to a Walboro 525 liters per hour pump, and then the 1050 injectors. And all that in two years. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, and a, and a catch can too. Tell me a little yes. bit up. Tell me a little bit about this because it looks a little custom right here. Yeah, actually, uh, Mike again, Mike Randalls, he he made that as well. Uh, that is a custom catch can, and they ended up doing a cool little touches with a breather filter on there. Um, all those fittings are AN fittings. They're all aircraft grade fittings. Um, a lot of a lot of time and money into hoses and fittings with this car. Um, so the first thing I really did notice about the car was um, it was basically a Calsonic. GTR without the livery. I mean, like, look at that. It's just blue on white. Actually, when I was first getting into uh, Skylines, I was looking at the uh, the Calsonic uh, R32 that competed in the JTCC in the 90s, where they dominated in the um, Japanese Touring Car Championships, and then and then the Australian Touring Tour or Australian Championships, where uh, that's where they got the name Godzilla, the R32. And the Calsonic car was my favorite. And I already started with Bayside Blue. And a good friend of mine had these T37s that were on his car. He had a Sylvia in Japan. And um, we ended up getting these stateside, and they were a perfect fit. These are what, 17 by what, 8.5? They're nine 17 and by 9.5 plus 12, oh, wow, which okay. actually isn't a, a super common offset from what I've seen. Um, and then, of course, Volk discontinued the uh, OG T37s now. So I, they're, they're special to me. I wanted to make this car body kit, uh, everything and all. Uh, aesthetically look like someone in Japan could have had this car in like the late 90s um, so it, it, it's kind of like a period build I guess because that's a that's a Dula kit right yeah so the whole kit's a this is a whole Duluc uh, T2 kit so that's bumper skirts and rear bumper um, it was all made in Japan so um, th they made it in Japan shipped it over it took about two months to make but somehow it was like three days to get here from Japan which is really funny it was uh, a few days to get it all fitted. For the most part, it turned out really good. And we did a uh, custom splitter. Um, and uh, up front, the splitter is all eighth inch aluminum. My friends, John and David at um, FS Performance or, uh, made the, made the uh, splitter for me that is uh, chassis mounted. And we actually uh, nutserted it into the subframe. Full function. Yeah, we wanted to make it so it protected the bumper but also was more than just for looks. That's great. And tell me a little bit about your, uh, your brakes out of right here, actually. Yeah, um, I love those brakes. Uh, a good friend of mine, Jim, he, uh, he, his car went more race car and couldn't fit them. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting them from him. They are the uh, High Rev Motors uh, big brake kit. Those are six piston calipers in the front, four piston in the rears. Were they refinished, the calipers? Yeah, so we, we painted them. We actually wanted to do like a top secret gold color. A lot of times I was kind of getting close to just doing like an R35 gold, where, how those Brembos are. Yeah, those like, glisten a little more. Yeah. They, they're cool, but I want, then we wanted to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. So we tried to get as close as we could to the top secret gold. And uh, I think it turned out awesome. It's crazy. It's like you're barely, you're like barely clearing the wheel here too. Caliper fitment. That's a different kind of fitment. Let's check out the inside actually. So right off the bat, I like that. I don't want to say it's messy because it's not messy. I want to say it's like more driver oriented. You know, you could tell like this is a car that you've been driving. I mean, there's like yeah. patina here and there. It's driven and I didn't want it to look perfect. I just want it to look relatively presentable. But there's a few touches here and there. These uh, I did these Recaro SR3 seats. Um, the harnesses are a limited edition um, Night Runner International. They did a run uh, collaboration with Willens. So they did a, a four-point cam lock harness. Um, I'm a big fan of those. Um, keys racing shift knob and keys racing wheel. I ended up getting the old school Nismo uh, cigarette lighter cap um, over there, which was, <laughs> Nismo tax is, is entirely different world. It's crazy. It's the whole JDM tax on everything right now. I yeah. mean, the, it, you call it the Nismo tax. There's a drift tax. There's, I mean, yeah. everything JDM related right now is just like spiking. Yeah, it's going crazy nowadays, but uh, I was glad to get one of those. Um, just little touches here and there. The interior is definitely gonna keep going from there, but one of the newest additions we did was um, ECU Master. They set us up with this digital dash. It's called their ADU5. So um, it's considered, a, it's like a digital race pack dash. So we can do all our data monitoring from here. 
We do have it set up with a uh, GPS system for accurate speed. Um, I can monitor water temp, oil pressure, fuel, all that good stuff. Uh, it has a lap timer. Um, ECU Master has been really great. We've been working with them. They actually sponsored the car. Um, I'm running their ECU. It's called the EMU Black. So that's a, a standalone from them. They made a really great harness, made it really easy to use. My tuner loves it. So um, that's the setup we're running on the, on the dash for now. It just fits so nicely right there. Look at that. It's like nice and plain, nothing to distract you from anything really. Yeah, I, I like the simplicity of it. You know, I, I loved the old school nostalgic looking gauges. Um, but once we start getting a little more horsepower and we're doing a little more stuff, it's, it's nice to have accurate, easy stuff to monitor the important stuff that's going on with the car. Best part about it, nice little doggo right here. That's Dexter, that's my p race pup, and uh, we'll probably be attaching pictures of him in the car here. So he, he's my co-pilot, and I really like it when he sits on the uh, left side of the car, and people who don't know what JDM cars are think that there's a dog driving a car. So that really, that's always a- uh, Using a little kick here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's always fun. Honestly, the only thing you're missing is a giant CalSonic sticker right there. I think you're gonna convince me to do a livery real soon. That's a little, uh, little Calsonic right here. I think the Nismo sticker goes down here. The impulse <laughs> something race, like that. Little impulse racing right over here. Except we're gonna have to do all Toyo tire stickers though. Um, ah, that's fine. Yeah, that's, it, that's it's the, the effort difference. that counts. You know, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's this is amazing. It's it's honestly like the perfect little. I mean, I wouldn't say little, but it's like the perfect set perfectly set up street car really for this part of town, right? Yeah. So m my thing with this car was I didn't want to make it. Um, you know, a one trick pony. I didn't want it to be just um, a show car or just a drag car or anything. I kind of wanted to be able to drive it anywhere, take it and do anything I wanted to with it and for it to be uh, competent and really do well. So if I wanted to take it on a toge, if I wanted to do some back roads runs, if I wanted to do a circuit track, uh, put it in a car show, whatever. I wanted it to be set up for doing all that. Jack, Jack of all trades really, right? Jack of all trades, master of none. So that's kind of what this car has been for me. That's amazing. Ah, oh, man, I just can't get over this front bumper. This, like, Dola kit is just amazing. Yeah, and that's a D-Max hood from D-Max Japan. And so I, I thought that really went well with the, uh, with the kit. It kind of looks like the R34 V-Spec. I like how, like, you left this part exposed, the carbon right here. Yeah, so the whole hood was carbon, but we ended up painting it, um, and I wanted to leave the vents raw. I thought it was a cool little touch. We don't see these in California at all. I mean, we get GTRs, you know, we get R32s, but for the most part, uh, the ones that I see, um, they're relatively stock. They keep them mild. They don't go ham on them. The only ones that do go ham are the ones that are light, uh, light or registered out of state, yeah. like in Arizona and New Mexico. Yeah, I've heard it's really expensive to get them legal in California from um, what I've seen. Yeah, think of uh, whatever you paid for your GTR and just add another 10 grand on top. Yeah, yeah. And not, not only that, your, your car will also be making less power because of it, which I don't know why anyone would do that, but I guess to get a California plate, people are willing to do many things. It's, it's a different flex if you got a GTR with a California plate. Yeah, it, it, honestly it is, it really is. I like this like ducktail thing right here too. Yeah, everyone has to do the Fujimura carbon little gurney flap. It's like controlled, you know. It's it's not like too hectic. It's, it's like a controlled. Bad. It's like a controlled loud. It, it doesn't scream at you. It's just kind of like it's refined. Yeah, there you yeah. go. It's refined. That's. I'm sorry, but I just, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place right now. So, yeah, it's refined. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I, I this has been a great experience for me because I, I learned a lot about cars in the process. Um, I, I made a lot of great friends along the way. Uh, couldn't have done it without my friends Mike Randall's. Um, Brian Zubin at Zubin Performance Parts, um, of course, John um, and Steve at Full Send Performance, and Troy at Trilogy Performance, who did all my tuning. So he did an awesome job getting this to uh, function and uh, do all the little stuff, not just make a lot of power, but also be drivable on the streets. Nice and reliable. Yeah. And all that. Um, can we go for a ride along? Let's do it. Cool. Let's see how this yeah. I really want to like compare it to a stock GTR. 
Oh, it's a lot faster. Oh, wow. Oh my God. You know, for how fast it is though, it's insanely comfortable. Like, it, it, it's crazy how comfortable this thing is right now. Ooh, what kind of shocks do you have on this car? So um, these are Fortunato 500S coilovers. Um, I love them, they're awesome. Fortune sponsored the car and uh, it's the best coilover for the money in my opinion. It, it honestly, it, it feels like we're in a GT car right now. That's how comfortable yeah. it is. And like the road that we're on is not the smoothest road. I mean, you were just, you know, rolling through like at 50 miles an hour there and I didn't feel a thing. All right, you ready for a little one? Yeah. That's nice. I like that. So we actually have a switch where I can uh, turn it from all wheel drive to rear wheel drive or vice versa. So right now we're in rear wheel drive, but if- you know, Yeah, that's why I got a little tail happy earlier, yeah. right? Yeah. So if I want a little more traction, I can just switch it back to all wheel drive. Do you have like a torque vectoring system or is it just on and off? So um, the car, from the factory has what's called a Tessa, yeah. which is um, basically a torque vectoring system that keeps the car rear wheel drive mm -hmm. until it feels slip and then the fronts kick in. Yeah. So what we essentially do is just bypass that sensor for the front wheel drive so you, sensor. You, you just have full control over it then? Correct. Okay. So then we just don't allow it to switch into the front wheel drive mode, which That's makes awesome. it rear wheel drive. Yeah. It's funny because that technically makes this car four wheel drive and not all wheel drive. I know there's like a whole technicality behind it, but. The comments are gonna blow up. I know, it's it's true though, it's, it's true. It's not a full time all wheel drive car. So, you know, by definition, it's technically a four wheel drive car. I like I just like how smooth it is it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like there's a turbo you know what I mean it, 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 the the boost just feels very linear it is linear and I, I think that's a lot due to the uh, the twin scroll setup that helps a lot we tried to minimize boost lag as much as possible we didn't want it to be like an on off switch so I don't know what's happening right now but Michael's letting me drive this thing so I'm gonna go take it for a spin um, I've driven Larry's GTR before in stock form. So this will be a pretty good comparison because I've never driven anything like this before. I mean, look at this, 550 horsepower, like look at this. I'm just going to pretend I'm part of the Impul Racing Team driving the Kawasaki car, so don't mind if I nerd out a little bit. It's all for the dramatics. Yeah. You know? Clip. All right. <laughs> That's satisfying clunk. How's the clutch? It's a Nismo. Oh, so, that's the... Yeah, Nismo Super Copper Max, or Super Copper Mix. Um, yeah, they're pretty stiff, but you'll get used to it. Oh, the steering is like kind of stiff too. Yeah, so we uh, I deleted high kiss, so it doesn't have the rear wheel steering anymore. Right off the bat, it's actually, the clutch is really stiff, but it's actually not hard to drive at all. It's quite similar to my STI, but it doesn't jerk as hard. So it's a little smoother, definitely on the more Grand Touring side of like smoothness. So, so far so good. I, I mean, granted, I'm only driving like 20 miles an hour. So, wow, this is nice. I keep, I keep trying, trying to... Well, what's nice is the only stock is the turn signal stock. Yeah. Like everything else is like a little knob. Yeah. So that helps with the right-hand drive confusion. I like the steering wheel feel too. It's like yeah. suede, but like- I think they call it buckskin. Buckskin? Buckskin. It's like leather, but not leather. Yeah. It's like leather and suede meat. I gave up on trying to keep it perfect. It's it's definitely a patina, if you want to call it that. I don't want to go too fast. I'm scared. You'll be fine. I'm scared. You're in third gear, so you're not going to kill yourself. <laughs> you're right. These are really long gears. Yeah, it's a five speed. Yeah, that's not bad. It's comfortable, I like it. That's like my biggest takeaway from this is that it's like a really comfortable car. Yeah, it is. Nice rev match, that wasn't bad. Flopped that one a little bit. It wasn't bad. <laughs> I love the RPMs in that center. Yeah, look at that. So 
so the turbo kicks in around like 38-ish? Yeah, late threes. Yeah, um, I'm not really used to that because in my STI, it, it comes in around like 32, 33. Is that a VF39? Yeah, VF39. VF39, yeah. They're earlier, little guys. Yeah, I mean, they're like literally the size of like my palm, so. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you get the benefit of really early spool. Yeah, but then like, your like mid range is just terrible. You run out of air. Terrible. Yeah. Like, yeah. like five to six is like, you might as well just like sit down and wait for it. It's if, not happening anytime soon. If you look at the dyno graph for this car, it's so linear, just going all the way up, and it never, it never falls off. That's it awesome. It just keeps it pretty consistent. It's not super dramatic in the way the turbo comes in. It's, it like you, you described it well. It doesn't even necessarily feel like a turbo. Exactly. If you didn't have all those noises, the the waste gates blow <laughs> off. Yeah. If you didn't have all those crazy sounds, you wouldn't even know it's a turbo car. Is there a cop yet? Uh, uh, no, we're good. Oh, there's a Mustang. Oh, we're... oh yeah, we got a Mustang, a Focus ST. Ah, cool. All right, let's uh, drive at the speed limit. We got to show them our burble tune. Let's uh, let's show them how fast we drive up to the speed limit. <laughs> up on you it, yeah. it does like like basically 45 to like 65 is like whoop. It, it builds rpms real quick yeah. it's nice it's it's for you know what you put into it and like how like i guess quote unquote extreme it is it's actually nice it's like a very usable 550 horsepower you know like if you don't want it to be extreme you don't have to be but if you want to you can just give it that extra gas and like drive it at the red line if you wanted to and it's i like that that's like my favorite part about it. It's like, it's tame if you want it to be tame. We kept the creature comforts that we wanted, full interior, air conditioning, power steering, and uh, wanted to make sure it was a really good driver's car. Um, besides the whole getting like seven miles per gallon on E85 thing, you can you can drive this car often and, and, it, and it won't punish you for it. Yeah, I like that. I like this, like, I like this shift boot thing. I here. just got it. Really? So this and that, that carbon cooling panel you saw under the hood, I had those on order from Japan for the last three months. Really? The coronavirus, I got my kit right before the coronavirus and oh it held God. up yeah. everything in customs. So it it's took been, me, it's been like long these have been on for like a week. Yeah. So it was like a stock shift now and I didn't have that cooling panel, which I would have been really upset if we did the video without that. Cause there's just, it's just a bunch of guts hanging out there, like ugly stuff yeah, yeah. under there that, that that carbon covers up. Good uh, modified GTR experience. Yeah definitely not even close to being similar to a stock R32. Like, not even remotely close. It, as soon as you go yeah. big turbo, it changes everything. Comfort-wise, though, it's relatively the same. Like, it, it, the ride almost feels identical to a stock one, you know? I would say if you kept your the whole steering system stock, that probably helps with comfort. Yeah. Like, that big wheel and the and just, ha it's, it's easier to turn. All right, cool, that was amazing, Michael. Thank you so much yeah, for having man, me drive the car. I mean, it was such an amazing experience. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's all about uh, having fun and sharing with other people. To my STI, but it doesn't jerk as hard, so it's a little smoother. Definitely on the more Grand Touring side of like smoothness. So, so far so good.